Well, welcome back to BART Community College EMS Education. In these videos that you're going to be watching uh, for the next several parts, we're going to be covering the Medical Emergencies EMT Work Study Guide. These videos are going to cover everything for the medical emergencies from airway management all the way to the end of our medical emergencies, dealing with things like toxicology, immunology, uh, all the different facets that you have to understand uh, in EMS education uh, for your EMT certificate. So let's go ahead and start diving right in. When you look at the study guide, uh, you'll notice that the very first portions of the study guide uh, cover um, your A through O here of identifying the structure of the airway, uh, of the upper and lower airway. And then you notice that number two says, what are the signs of an adequate airway? So let's go ahead and quickly discuss what are the signs of an adequate airway. So signs that you have an adequate airway is the airway is open. You can hear and feel air movement in and out. The patient is talking to you in full and complete sentences. You're not hearing, uh, I'm just having, having trouble, tr tr trouble breathe, 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 breathing. They're not stuttering over their words and they're not giving you two to three word dyspnea. And the sound of the voice of the patient is normal. Signs of inadequate airway. What is the sign of an inadequate airway? Well, that leads us to number two. So let me go ahead and move my video screen over here. What are the signs of an inadequate airway? Signs of inadequate airway are unusual sounds that are heard with breathing, like strider and snoring. The patient is awake, but they're unable to speak or their voice sounds very hoarse. Uh, there's no air movement, which we call that apnea and there's an airway obstruction which we know that there can be varying types of airway obstructions from the most common airway obstruction the tongue all the way down to teeth vomit blood and foreign bodies so what are two manual maneuvers number four that you might use for airway management those two manual maneuvers would be a jaw thrust or a head tilt chin lift those are your two maneuvers what is an OPA? An OPA is an oropharyngeal airway. And the process of insertion that I teach is go in at a 90 degree angle at the corner of the mouth and you're going to insert and then turn. And then when you turn it, you, you've, you insert until you meet resistance and then turn it so it's anatomically correct. And we want to make sure that we're measuring from the corner of the mouth to the angle of the jaw. And it's also okay if you want to measure from the corner of the mouth to the angle of the ear, but I prefer to do anatomically correct because it's going to go in to the airway just like this. It's not going to go backwards. And when do we use an OPA is when we want to keep the tongue out of the way. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we keep that most common airway obstruction out of the way. We use it as a bite block, um, but there are some contraindications for using an OPA. And one of those, the biggest one, is a gag reflex. What is a nasopharyngeal airway? Well, that's what we call an NPA. A nasopharyngeal airway is inserted into the nose in the right or left nair. We want to make sure the bevel is towards the septum. And when we insert this into the nose, uh, we want to make sure that it's lubed up because that can be a little bit uh, hard to get through with that uh, rubbery tube. Uh, and that also is to be inserted in the semi-conscious patients or patients that we can't put an OPA in because they have a gag reflex. Now we also understood in airway management about the McGill forceps. And the McGill forceps is what we use to re retrieve objects in the airway because we do no longer do, do no longer do, do no do, blind finger sweeps. And when do we use them? When do we use McGill forceps is when we can see the object but we can't reach it with our fingers. And it's my preferred method to use that instead of sticking your fingers inside someone's mouth. You're not going to get your fingers bit off, but you might have somebody clamp down on them and that would hurt. And what is a stoma? A stoma by definition, it is an opening on the abdomen into the digestive tract or uh, into the uh, trachea. It is, it's a hole. It's a hole put in there uh, that they, they maintain with a tube. Uh, that we we have the the tracheostomy st stoma uh, a hole in the trach 
allowing the passage of air to move into the lungs. And those have to be maintained. Uh, so that leads us into how do we maintain those through suctioning. And so what is suctioning? Suctioning is, is the use of a uh, piece of equipment to remove fluids, remove semi-solid uh, particulates, and to remove it from the airway. Uh, and we use suctioning to remove those foreign body objects like vomit, blood, uh, secretions from the airway. And so how you would suction a stoma is you're going to use a soft, flexible tip suction, not a hard, rigid tip like a Yonkauer. And you're going to use that soft, uh, flexible tip. You're going to make sure that you, you go in. You're not going to go too far. And you're going to suction that stoma. And then you're going to bring it out, put it in some sterile water, clean off your, um, uh, your soft suction and then do it again. And you're gonna do that several times, um, but you don't wanna go too far. You just wanna get that stoma nice and clean. And you wanna make sure that you're doing it very aseptically because um, we don't wanna cause infection. Now, what is a King Airway? A King Airway is one of our advanced airway devices that we use. And one of these advanced airway devices uh, that we talk about is the King Airway. We also talk about the combi tube and we talk about the eye gel. The King Airway uh, we use uh, in individuals to secure the airway um, with this supraglottic device, which means it's not going into the trachea, it's supra above the glottic opening. Um, it has two bulbs on it, it has one single lumen tube, uh, goes into the airway and it passively pushes air across the tracheal opening. Uh, the process for insertion of the King airway uh, is to uh, pass it in uh, deflate with deflated cuffs, Follow the manufacturer's instruction, pass it all the way in till you meet, reach their measured line for the uh, proper size for the individual. And once you get it placed, inflate the cuffs, uh, secure the tube with a Thomas tube holder or a tube holder. And then once that tube is secured, uh, make sure that you're also applying your end tidal CO2 uh, and then beginning ventilations. Similar process with the combi tube. The combi tube is a dual lumen because there is two tubes uh, for the process that it happens to blindly enter into the trachea or if it's still in the esophagus. If it goes into the trachea, we're going to switch over to the other tube. Um, but if we're in the esophagus, we're going to stay on the main tube. There's two tubes um, and uh, we want to make sure that we are on the proper tube for placing those. Again, follow your manufacturer instructions for using the combi tube. Um, but the combi tube has two different cuffs and those have to be inflated with two different sizes of syringes uh, and those get inflated and then you, you place it, secure the tube and then begin your ventilations. Uh, moving on, we also have the when is a combi tube used. Uh, pretty much any of these, these types of supraglottic airway devices are used in our cardiac arrest situations or the patient accepts uh, this airway adjunct of a superglottic airway um, because we need to control their ventilations. An eye gel is another form of a superglottic airway. It falls under the laryngeal mask airway. There is no inflation necessary for the eye gel and it gets inserted into the airway, um, gets pushed down into the fascial pillars and seats up next to the tracheal opening. Uh, and then again, air passage goes over passively uh, it does allow for ventilation and less occlusion because you can't overinflate it because there is no inflation that is done. Um, eye gels, again, when are they used? They're going to be used when uh, your service uses these types of equipment and also they're going to be used uh, in the military. The military really likes using eye gels. So all of these different types of devices that you see here uh, that we, we learned about eye gels, combi tubes, MPAs, OPAs, um, king tubes, they have their, their point in place on when to use them. Um, it's just another tool.